It's Monday, July 7th. Excuse me. It's not Monday. It's Thursday, July 7th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Here I got a great show lined up for you tonight, if I can get the days straight. I've done that like two shows in a row. I, I'm definitely glad it's not Monday. I'm glad it's a lot closer to, uh, to Friday. Got a lot to share with you tonight. You know what comes next. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. We're go fly. Microphone. We're go fly. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go fly. Interflux totism suppressor. All right, I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Bucky, Bucky, who's got the button? Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast, coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio over Lake, overlooking greater Honolulu. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Todd Cochran, and it's great to be back with you here at the Geek and Central Podcast. Of course, we uh, took the night of the 4th of July off, so there was no show uh, really there for you on Tuesday. But I think every news outlet in the country and in the world pretty much was off on the 4th of July because I actually attempted to put a show together, but there was <laughs> there was nothing. So I said, forget it. Let's just enjoy the uh, the holiday, d-. and that's what we did. Hey, lots going on, and of course, I want to welcome the Ohana, all of you that are longtime listeners and viewers of the show. Hey, welcome to the show today, and of course, if you're new to the show, thanks for checking us out for the very first time, and make sure you get over to geeknewcentral.com and check out all the great content over there. Of course, check out our archive podcast available via the podcast link. Got lots of shows on the network right now, lots of exciting stuff going on. Of course, a new edition of The Gadget Professor was released today by Don Bain, so that's available. Of course, you can subscribe to any of our shows. Via the second column of the website, if you go over there, it's real easy to get subscribed. And you'll see right there a big orange box. And that orange box has uh, all the information that you will ever need to uh, get subscribed to the show with RSS feeds, uh, links to Zoom, links to iTunes for uh, for all the shows. But, uh, of course, we've got Langley and uh, Robot Underpants that released every Monday. Of course, I've got the Saturday morning tech show, and i got a surprise for you. We're going to do something cool this Saturday with the Saturday morning tech show and some guests. And I say multiple guests, I guess, giving me a little bit of a hint of what we're going to do. And, of course, the second edition of the Chrome show. We'll talk about some changes to the Chrome show because I learned a lot uh, using the Chromebook during the first show, and there's some scaling issues in order for you folks to be able to see the screens. We're going to address that. But... Um, I want to welcome the listeners from 182 countries across the this uh, this planet. Thanks for tuning in. And, of course, uh, get signed up for the newsletter. The newsletter is delivered directly to your inbox immediately following the show. It will contain all the links to all the content that I'm going to talk about tonight. And what a better way to wake up in the morning and have those, just all those, you know, great tech links that you can kind of go through uh, while you're listening to the show or before or after. So definitely get subscribed to the newsletter, and that way we'll, we'll punch that out to you immediately following the podcast. Of course, you can watch this show at live.geeknewcentral.com, or you can, of course, check us out on Ustream. Right now, we're simulcasting over on the Tech Podcast Network, which uh, is going through a server reset at the moment. <laughs> uh, it's 1 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast, or 2 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast, and I know that our our uh, main uh, IT guy is asleep, so I just went ahead and punched the reset button, and hopefully, uh, or virtually, and hopefully it'll come up here in a little bit. But uh, uh, that's the second time in a week that things went down, so we're going to have to have a discussion with the team, find out what's going on with that box. But, um, of course, if you've got comments on today's show, we want you to feel free to uh, drop me a line, and you can do that via the show hotline at 619 342 Seven three six five open twenty four hours a day seven days a week and of course if you want to send me an email you can do so at geek new geek news oh that there we go geek news at gmail dot com try to sell you some GoDaddy stuff right there uh, before we are ready to do that so let me move that box over one gotta love it okay so let's go ahead and uh, talk here real quick about some things going on here. 
Big news day today uh, in tech, so we got a lot to share with you tonight. Matter of fact, I had to remove a whole bunch of stuff from the stack, so I got a whole pile of stuff for you. But I want to take just a few minutes and just say, talk about some things I did over the past week. We were having some audio issues with the secondary audio streams and um, had this humming noise, and I essentially tore the entire studio apart in all the wire runs because we separate the audio and video and have everything kind of segregated so it's you know it's nice and neat keep power away from everything and we're trying everything in a book and i said okay let's pull a tricaster the tricaster is in a soundproof box so i pulled the soundproof box away from the wall moved everything around it and then i got this little tab and i opened up the back of the box and i looked in and this was after i'd already worked about two hours and I said, you are such a knucklehead. And what I had done was the TriCaster has very distinct audio out jacks for pristine audio. And then it's also got a headset feed where you can just plug in just like you would on a normal headset to listen through the computer to kind of just do some quick editing or something. Well, like a knucklehead, I was feeding the video downstream with the headset output and completely not supposed to do that. So I pulled the jack out, moved it over one, and voila, clean audio for the entire network now that audio is a little hot so i've been uh, working on dialing it down for those of you that are actually watching the show and uh matter of fact i'm going to make a, another drop on that today so that uh, you're not getting hammered so bad um, on that specific stream but uh lots going on here and lots uh, to talk about as well i want to thank the sponsors for of course that were with us with june and i want to welcome GoDaddy back for our, our for our July shows and got a special deal for you. This is absolutely outstanding. Now I want you to to pay attention to this deal, okay? You're going to get hosting with GoDaddy for a dollar 99 each month for the first 3 months of your hosting uh, plan with them. Now this is a special deal. This is only valid uh from through August 5th. So you're not going to get much time to use this code. It's code GEEK77. You're going to get $1.99 hosting per month for three months. You do have to sign up for the economy, the economy hosting, but it still comes with unlimited bandwidth, almost everything there that you need to really do a great, uh, have a great website. And the best part about it is, again, a buck ninety nine. And if I come over here to the actual GoDaddy site, if you click on my link, you see here, special offer, get three months of accounting web hosting for $1.99. Now, that's $3, that's $2 off the normal pricing per month for the economy plan. So a great way to start. And here's, here's a little trick. Just sign up for three months. Okay, so it's going to cost you 6 bucks for three months. If you decide you like the hosting plan after three months, then go ahead and renew for 12. Okay, now here's how you really double up, folks. This is how you save a lot of money. So you sign up for the first three months at $1.99 each month. And at the end of the third month, then you come back and renew for a year and use one of my promo codes. You use Todd to save 10% or you use Geek15 where you get 15% off on orders $20 or more. There's a whole host of codes you can use again on the renewal. So it's kind of like a double whammy. You get the good savings by the first three months, and then you come right in behind it, and you you use one of the promo codes to save money for the for the additional 12 months. And at the same time, if you want to upgrade the account, you upgrade the account to the next level, and really, it's it's a great deal. So Geek77 is the promo code, and we want to thank GoDaddy for bringing this special offer to us. And don't forget to go over to geeknewcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy for all my codes. I think we got about 10 codes on there that you can use for every occasion. If you're buying an SSL certificate, if you're renewing a domain, if you're uh, moving something over from another register, uh, we have the best prices and the biggest selection of promo codes in the space. So definitely check it out at geeknesscentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. Okay, um, hey, the, my wife is still in Japan. New up, No new updates from her on her father except um, some of you may have been following on Facebook and uh, had made some mentions about her having some, well, let's put it this way. They do things different in Japan. And um, the family had already kind of made the decision that the life support effort was going to be discontinued and that 
they were going to go through the process of whatever that was involved. And it turns out in Japan, when someone's on a respirator or someone is on some kind of by bypass machine, um, there's no taking them off. It's just not like you can tell, like here in the United States, where the doctors say, okay, there's no hope. You know, the you know, you know doctors will give you those options and say, okay, here's the option family to decide what you're going to do. Or if you've got, a you know, some sort of a, a living will where you already have specified what you want to happen here in the United States, that's honored and the families have more leeway. Well, so far in Japan, they are kind of right up against a brick wall now. And I don't know what's going to happen next. So I'll keep you advised. Uh, she's very annoyed and on the war path um, because basically her dad is just suffering and he would not want them to continue the effort that is being taken by the hospital staff. So the hospital staff and the family are kind of at odds. But uh, we'll see what happens. Um, if this continues to be a status quo, she's going to come home on the 14th. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Okay. Um, again, talking about the Chrome show, we're going to work on the scaling of the, uh, of the video, uh, specifically for the screenshots. And really what happens is when you plug the Chromebook in and I run it through the TriCaster, um, there's really no way to set the external monitor screen resolution. So I've had to go with whatever the default resolution is for the box. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to get really used to using Control Plus because that's how you basically scale up the actual uh, web pages in Chrome. So that that's what I'll be doing with the next edition of the Chrome Show. So we get those get those screens bigger so that you can see it uh, when you're watching on playback, either on the Roku or Boxy or wherever you're watching it. So it's a little bit of a challenge. We'll work through that process. And uh, I, even know, I knew it right from the very get-go after we recorded that it was going to be a problem. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, okay, I think that's it for stuff here today. Uh, new sponsors coming on board uh, next week. So we'll be uh, introducing new sponsors next week. Excited about that. Of course, ADT was with us last month. I hope all of you took advantage of that offer at ADT. It was a great deal. And uh, if you haven't, uh, that deal's gone by the wayside. That 800 number is still kind of down in there in the show notes. You may still be able to get through and get that deal. But if not, uh, it's, it's bounced. It's out of here. So let me go ahead here and bounce into the, the regular content tonight. And, of course, we encourage you to get over to geeknewcentral.com. Check out all the great content over there. And, again, if you're new to the show tonight, thanks. Hey, have been playing a lot with, um, with Google+. Plus. And what we're going to do on the Saturday morning tech show is we're going to, in monitor number one back here, we're going to uh, launch a Hangout. And I want to make the Hangout uh, open to TPN members and also if any of you that are watching today, if you've got a Google Plus account and you want to join us in the Hangout um, where we're going to live stream the Hangout, uh, definitely drop me a line and we'll get you dialed in there, okay? So... um. Just email me at geeknews at gmail.com. Let me know that you want to hang out with us on Saturday morning. We're going to start at 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, tw 12 Eastern. And uh, we'll uh, let as many come in as possible, and we'll kind of have fun with that. And we'll have one of our regular guests in the in the bottom monitor on Skype. We'll kind of see how this thing plays out and how it, uh, if nothing else, it'll be a fun experiment. It may end up being total chaos. But so far, hanging out in Hangout in Google+, Plus. It's been a pretty good. Uh, it's been a pretty good experience, and um, everyone's raving about. It. Of course, we'll talk about stuff with Facebook here in a minute, but uh, other than that, uh, let's go ahead and, and talk about what is happening in the world of tech this week. Well, it's it's been a crazy day today, um, news wise, and of course tomorrow morning, if everything goes right, the space shuttle is is due to launch. Uh, weather conditions do not look good. So they may have to push a day. Um, obviously, the mood at NASA is uh, bittersweet by many of the members that are working there. Lots of articles that are honor honoring the uh, the shuttle staff. But I know they've got a lot of bloggers out in uh, at Cape Canaveral. Now. I know Scoble's out there, a number of folks that NASA has flew out and are going to you know basically make available for them to uh, um, watch the launch. And uh, but Discovery is due to uh, to launch tomorrow. We'll see if it happens with the with the weather conditions. Uh, but um, it's it, right now it doesn't look good. I think the actual launch, and I didn't even get the time. I think it's around noon Eastern 
Uh, but anyway, it uh, all you got to do is go over to nasa.gov and then load the stream up uh, first thing tomorrow morning, and uh, you'll be dialed into what's happening with the uh, with the shuttle launch. In a very disturbing piece, and I'm, I want to talk about this a little bit here tonight. I guess this is a uh, soapbox time. The White House has basically announced a six-strike voluntary agreement which has been brokered between copyright holders and Internet access providers, in other words, ISPs. You know that the administration has been looking to do something like this. They've been pushing for this. And they say... The joining of Internet service providers and entertainment companies in a cooperative effort to combat online infringement can further this goal of supporting jobs and exports, and the administration commends them for reaching this agreement, said Victoria Espinel, U.S. Intellectual Property Enforcement Coordinator, in a statement today, we believe it will have a significant impact on reducing online privacy. And um, here's what they're going to do. The ISPs have basically said, we're going to work with you, the copyright holder, to come up with a six strike law. And how it's going to work is this. You're going to get an email from your internet service providing saying there's a problem with your account or a user of your account and some educational materials about copyright infringement is going to be sent to you via email. Now, this is only if the content owner complains. The ISP is going to be providing this notification to you, the subscriber, that may or may not be hosting infringing content. In other words, playing with peer-to-peer, -peer, downloading stuff from different sites. And the ISPs have agreed to punish you without any law. The ISPs have agreed to punish you. Now, who's involved in this? Well, it's just about everyone. Comcast, AT&T, Time Warner, Verizon. Um, I think, yeah. It, so they're calling it the copyright alert system. On your second alert, sounds like this, like red, green, blue stuff that Homeland Security came up with. But on the second alert, another email with more educational, I guess better for better words, what they call it educational information, but for more educational uh uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? What does it'll come to me? This email alert will give you this information, and they may escalate you automatically to the third alert. So, in other words, you're gonna get this email, and then they have the option of going straight to the third alert. The third alert is another email that will force the user to click through to acknowledge that the ISP has a flagged the account for copyright abuse. And what the word I was looking for earlier was educational propaganda. <laughs> so get on a third alert and an email will force you to click through to acknowledge that you received the email noting the copyright problem. On the fourth alert, you get another email. <laughs> wow. That forces you to acknowledge that the ISP has flagged the account for copyright abuse. On the fifth alert, this is where the ISP can start taking mitigation measures. And they... These are supposedly reasonably calculated to stop further content theft. Those include throttling broadband speeds or forcing the consumer to a landing page that directs the user to call your ISP to discuss the content theft. It cannot include disrupting a person's voice or email connectivity, and the ISP doesn't have to implement any of these. This is only an option, but they can. So they can throttle you. Or they can force you to a landing page when you load your, load your browser. But you can still get your email and, and uh, uh, in, your, in your voice service. On the sixth alert, the ISP must take some kind of mitigation measure. And the ISP doesn't have to cut off service, but they could, or the copyright owner could, force them to. So here you're going to have, instead of a three-strike law, you're going to be alerted by email as much as four times. Fifth time, you're going to basically be shut off from the web. And then the sixth time, you're going to essentially face the wrath of the copyright owner. Um, and if you want to protest this, you're going to have to get your Visa card out because if you want to protest the, the, or contest the mitigation, you're going to have to pay the ISP 35 bucks to review your case. 
So you, you, even if you say, hey, we weren't doing nothing, they're going to say, tough. You're going to have to shell out $35 to uh, have your case reviewed. Um, now, right now, this is kind of less anti-consumer than what's the three-strike law. But here's the question. Does your provider have the right to cut you off? At this point, it sounds like they do to a certain extent. And um, the FCC, makes me want to puke here, has usual noncommittal response to the effort. They say, today's announcements of a voluntary cooperative effort to combat online copyright infringement is a positive development as the commission has recognized copyright infringement has serious adverse consequences for the economy and efforts to address this issue can and must coexist with robust protections for internet freedoms and openness. We look forward to the recommendations of the organization that will be created as part of this effort. So it's going to cost you a challenge. You're going to get plenty of emails. And the MPAA and RIAA have succeeded in forcing the hand of the ISPs where Congress has taken and the states have taken no legal action or no legal legislation to force the ISPs to do this. So essentially, the ISPs are now going to be your co the cops of the Internet to a certain extent, and they're going to be at the will of the RIAA and MPAA. So stand by. This is going to uh, get more ugly, I'm sure, and this is widely covered today across multiple sites. Uh, the sites that I got my source information was over at Ars Technica, over at Torrent Freak, at GigaOM, the folks over at Tech Dirt had information on this. So a variety of websites covering this uh, topic today. And uh, now you're going to be under the... Uh, so be careful out there because you know what's going to happen. The RAAA is not suing nobody. The MPAAA still is. But they're going to come after anyone that they even slightly suspect of being a peer-to-peer -peer user and if they have any slightest indication that you've downloaded anything, they're going to go after your IP in a big, big way. They are going to, because really what it's costing them nothing, right? So all they have to do is, is basically say, oops, that IP. And where before they had to go file a lawsuit and, and use a process to get money out of you. So now they're going to go to your ISP and say, hey, that guy at that IP or that woman at that IP they're the ones that are stealing content. So go after them. I think this is going to have a huge, huge impact on the number of people that are using peer-to-peer -peer sites. As I've said before, I believe in buying and paying for my content. But I also understand that there is so much content that we can't get access to legally. I understand why people go to the, or not legally online, they want to, you know, you're forced into these, draconian purchasing uh, processes, or sometimes you can't even get it digitally. It's changed, but they definitely want to make sure that uh, you spend your $14.99 or $15.99 or $20.99 or $1.99 on paying for everything that you consume. So uh, I'm sure that the uh, cable providers are jumping for joy because they think this is going to help bring people back to traditional TV um, time will tell on how this all boils. I'd love to hear you guys' feedback and where you think this is going to fall out. Geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline is 619-342-7365. Open 24 hours a day. Of course, you can reach out to me at Twitter at Geek News as well. Let's go ahead and move on here to really news out of, out of the UK. And boy, oh boy, with British tabloid News of the World which is being shut down this weekend. Uh, I guess Rupert Murdoch decided that uh, what they had done was even more than he could take. But essentially what uh, the British tabloid did was they were hacking phones. They were ha supposedly hacked as up to as many as 4,000 phones and were reading text messages and getting information off of celebrities' phones. Uh, it was it's, it's even worse than that on this scandal. Um, but... You know, so it raises a lot of people. How did they hack my phone? How is that possible? And uh, the uh, 
the British government's going to be going after these people. I'm sure there's going to be people going to jail over this before it's all over. But uh, Robert Murdoch basically shut down the newspaper, and this is the number one tabloid. And I guess the it's similar to the Inquirer or something like that that we have here in the United States. But um, the folks over at CNET reached out to Kevin Mitnick. And if you guys remember Kevin Mitnick, he did a few years in jail for doing some hacking back in the day. So he, uh, they called Kevin and said, hey, how hard is it to, uh, to hack a cell phone? And Kevin said, hey, man, this is easy. Um, he says, I could demonstrate it for you here. Do you, uh, do you mind if I uh, hack your voicemail or hack your phone? The guy said, oh, no, no, go ahead. And within about uh, five minutes, uh, Kevin Mitnick was listening to this journalist's voicemail. And um, the author of this piece, uh, Eleanor Miles, basically totally freaked out, couldn't believe that it was possible. But Kevin goes on to say, he says, any 15-year-old old that knows how to write a simple script can find a voice IP provider that spoofs caller IDs and sets this up in about 30 minutes. He says, if you're not adept at programming, you can use a spoofing service and pay for it. So this is easy, he says. The technique is called caller ID spoofing. It's been around and used for years. He says, a caller ID spoofing account in the name of Paris Hilton was suspended for voicemail hacking with other celebrities, including Lindsay Lohan. So there were some folks that got to hack that way. But anyway, this is uh, partly what the folks in the U.K. did, um, but their stuff was a little bit deeper. So, uh, Wow. First newspaper to get killed over uh, hacking. And uh, I guess uh, Robert Murdoch did the right thing, and he pulled the plug on this uh, on this company. I'm sure not without great angst. As I, as I understand, he kind of said in the beginning, oh, this is not such a big deal. and uh, But it's been big in the news today all over the place. There's been some uh, discussion here about the competitive prospects of Google Plus, and I I've been really kind of wowed by Google Plus. I'm on the uh, of the impression of after using it here for about uh, whatever how many days I've used it a week, five or six days, that this is going to be a great way for people to have private conversations, uh, much better than anything that's on Facebook, and because you can segregate people out into groups, but. I'm excited about business prospects about this, what's going to happen when they allow businesses, and we'll talk about that a little later. But essentially what they're feeling is is that the impact this is going to have is going to affect WordPress. And I don't know about that because I'm tonight I'm trying to drive people from WordPress, I mean from uh, Google Plus into the live stream, and I have to watch the live stream later and see how it was affected. But they feel it's going to affect Tumblr significantly. It's not going to affect Skype very much. Foursquare is going to be affected. Folks at LinkedIn is going to be affected. Um, Facebook, not very much. They don't feel that it's going to be having an effect. But um, Twitter even says it's going to be impacted significantly by Google+. And I think here what, what my thoughts are is that I'm definitely spending a lot less time on Twitter because here's the beauty about this. And let me just bring this up here. Let me, I want to just show you guys something real quick. And let me bring this up. Let me go ahead and um, I'm in Chrome. So let me go ahead and load my Gmail account. And I, I showed this to you the other night. So I'm loading my email, all right? And if I just click on plus Todd, this is just sitting here kind of all day refreshing. And I can kind of go over there when I want to. And then it updates me in this corner. And as I talked about that last show, that's the power of this thing. With Twitter, I'm just sitting on you know, a Twitter doing, I can't follow that stream. There's too much stuff in it. And um, we'll see what happens as more of you get accounts. But up to this point, pretty effective, pretty effective stuff. So we'll see what happens with the competitive prospects at Google Plus um, as time goes on as more people start using it. If you want to call out an article written by Alan over at Geek News Central, it's talked about Amazon taking on Google and probably trying to take and uh, prepare for what's going to happen here uh, this fall with the, with the iCloud. But Amazon's taking on Google in the cloud, and uh, Alan wasn't impressed. Even though Amazon's opened it up with unlimited space for music, he, uh, he wasn't super impressed with it. He's been using uh, Google quite a bit up to this point, Google Music. So I'll have this link in the show notes for you to check out. And 
and you can kind of get a feel here for what uh, Alan's uh, thinking on this. But um, he uh, he says this is just continuing to heat up. So we'll see where this goes. But a good article by Alan, of course, uh, one of our writers here at, at Geek News Central. Along with that, Andrew, our, one of our correspondents out of the UK, he did a great write-up about uh, what I was just talking about a few minutes ago about news of the world, the tabloid, of course, and the, and the phone hacking scandal. So you're going to be able to come over to Geek News Central and read uh, a UK perspective of this. And uh, Andrew is uh, one of our guys that uh, covers events in the uh, United Kingdom for us. So definitely check that out. Have those linked up in the show notes for you, of course. Moving on here, over at ehomeupgrade.com, there's a good article talking about connected TVs. And, of course, you guys know I'm a big fan of connected TVs. I think that they're giving you more options. And what we're finding now is that um, those that have connected TVs, what we're finding is two out of five households still prefer live TV. Now, I think that's pretty good. Um, pretty good odds here that, uh, um, that live, you know, that even those, even with those numbers, I think it gives us, gives me hope that as time goes on, more of you will be doing a, a mixture of live and watching stuff through your connected TV and, uh, don't buy another TV without it being connected, whether it be an LG or Samsung. Um, those are the two that have some of the best connectivity or connected options. We definitely want you to get the Samsung because of our Samsung app. But, uh, you know, it's, it is an interesting survey here and that they found 47% of people aged 13 to 64 surveyed in April, 2011 preferred watching live TV at its scheduled time. 23% said they prefer DVR recordings. Now that blew me away because we don't watch anything that hasn't been recorded. Who wants to sit through commercials? Nobody. And, um, so that's also including, uh, uh, on-demand content from Hulu as well, talking about stuff going on there. But uh, I was pretty surprised that people like, you like watching live when it's actually supposed to be on and sitting through the commercials? To me, that is just, uh, you know, if for a 30-minute program, what do you have, 10 minutes of commercials? You, you can get through that content in 20 minutes. You know, you can get a, a almost a, a three for, three for uh, instead of watching two programs in an hour, you can watch three. Um I don't understand not using a DVR. We DVR everything. So anyway, here let's talk about copyright protection. The uh, And this is over on Dvork.org. And I love his graphic here. The U.S. government is getting ready to come out with guidelines on what they're going to do with all these people that they, all these domains that they seized. You know, they seized ICE seized a bunch of domains. So British website owners, quote unquote, could now face extradition to the United States on piracy charges, even if their operation has no connection to America and does something which is most probably legal in the UK. The officials leading the US web anti piracy efforts has told The Guardian. The US immigration and uh, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency is targeting overseas website it believes are breaking U.S. copyright whether or not their services are based in America or, or there is another direct U.S. link. Are you kidding me? They say as long as a website address, address ends in .com or .net, if it is implicated in the spread of pirated U.S.-made films, TV, or other media, it is a legitimate target to be closed down or targeted for prosecution. He says, while those addresses are tr traditionally seen as global, all their connections are routed through, the, through VeriSign, internet infrastructure company based in Virginia, which the agency believes is sufficient to seek U.S. prosecution. Wow. They have lost their minds. Are you kidding me? All right, it's one thing to be an American citizen and having a, a website and running something illegal. You are fair game. 
But I can't imagine. Can you imagine the U.S. telling the British consul, hey, we want one of your citizens that's run a website served in Britain on something that was legal in Britain, but yet they had some American material on there. We want that person extradited to the U.S. Wow. Are they insane? Are they insane? I don't get it. Don't use a .com. Don't use a .net. That's for sure. Amazing. Are you guys amazed? 619-342-7365. Open 24 hours a day. Geeknews at gmail.com. Geeknews at gmail.com. Amazing. Just amazing. Well, in other news, Wright Haven has lost again. Surprise! They're making paid $3,800 in someone's legal fees because they didn't even serve the person. <laughs> or they did, but they didn't serve them with updated of the, an update of the, of the lawsuit. Judge threw it out. It's given the defendant 3800 bucks, or the one in, in legal fees. Funny. YouTube users have finally woken up to Senate Bill 978. And, of course, we've talked about Senate Bill 978 here on this show. This is from Senators Amy Klobar and John Cornyn and Christopher Coons, who would like to adjust the criminal copyright statute to make some forms of linking, embedding, streaming a felony for which people could face five years in jail. And uh, this is a very scary bill. Part of the bill could be used against uh, anyone that does live stuff like I do. Um, or if I link to certain stuff or embed someone else's video, I could uh, be charged with this. If someone really wanted to, they could come after me. But going through as going through some of the videos, some of the folks just don't understand what really is at stake here. But uh, finally, the YouTube crowd has woken up to this. So Tech Dirt is, tech dirt is uh, responding to that. So if you want to see an example of it, go over to YouTube and just search S978, and you'll see some of the videos over there. Congress is also trying to hide massive data retention law by pen, uh, pretending it's an anti-child porn law. Now, don't get me wrong. I feel anyone that's doing anything with uh, with that type of material needs to go to jail for a very, very long time. Um, but they've got this new bill called the Protecting Children from the Internet Pornographers Act of 2011. It's a bill put forth by Texas Congressional Re uh, Re Representative Lamar Smith and co-sponsored uh, co by Representative Bill Flores, uh, Randy Forbes, Dutch Repsberger, and Debbie Wasserman Schultz. And all the bill really does is say that everyone that runs any type of web server or service has to keep log files online of, from, of their logs for 18 months at a minimum. They cannot remove any logs for 18 months. So anyone that has any type of website, online service, whatever it may be, um, but basically it just requires, this bill requires service advisors return, retain certain information, mainly IP addresses, again, on users for, for 18 months. Um, the bill exempts Wi-Fi providers. So obviously if someone is uh, going around and getting that type of material, where are they going to go? They're going to go find an open Wi-Fi port and download it. No one's going to, you know, none of these nasty guys or, or gals that are doing this are going to um, pull this data from their own home connection. They're going to go find a, an open, unprotected uh, Wi-Fi spot. So, you know, it really does a lot of good to try to, uh, to catch these folks. But, um, uh, I guess I'm not so against the keeping of log files, but then again, do, you know, if you're running a website that has, you know, is not, you know, these, they're going to these, they're going to websites that obscure anyway, they're trying to be hid. So I guess, uh, trying to track them back. But, um, anyway, that's, uh, that's what's going on here with that specific bill. All right, moving on, let's talk about uh, Dropbox. There, Dropbox was in the in the news because uh, they basically had some terms of service out there that were saying, hey, anything you upload to Dropbox is ours. But they released a, re a revised term of service agreement 
Due to the controversy caused by the recent update, the new version clarifies their position of data ownership and makes it very clear you and only you have a right to your data. So uh, this is uh, this is good news. And um, But there's another company called FilesAnywhere.com that's suing Dropbox for trademark infringement. So we'll see what uh, what happens there. But anyway, the terms of service were was changed. Hey, over in Extreme Tech, they did they have a great graphic. I don't know if they made it or if they were just linking to it. But let me bring this up. I've been seriously looking at solar power here in in a big, big, big way. Um, they've got some great uh, um, tax incentives, and they they've just come up with some new stuff that would make it uh, semi affordable to do. So let me bring this up here. This. This uh, article on Extreme Tech talks about the evolution of solar power and really how we've got to where we are. Did you know that uh, in 1839, the uh, really solar power was kind of detected at that point where a, a scientist by the name, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name, uh, well, I will, Alexander Bacelli, I think, um, observed the photovoltaic effects in the conductive solution exposed to light. And it goes all the way through to uh, back in 67 when the first uh, Soyuz was uh, powered by solar cells. And, of course, Skylab as well in the 70s. But we're here at this time to, you know, having solar becoming more affordable and being on the uh, being on our homes. Uh, we've got uh, solar panels on the White House and a variety of other government agencies that. Um, what, what are you guys doing with solar? What's your what's your latest? I'd love to hear you guys' uh, feedback. Are you guys taking advantage of any of the tax incentives? I think what I was looking at here is if I did it in three segments, if I took um, and did it at uh, about $16,000 a shot, no, not $16,000, $12,000 a shot, so it would take three segments, about $36,000 to do the whole house so I could go zero emission or zero uh, zero dollars where I could zero out my um, bill. Basically, I could, it would cost me out of pocket after tax breaks and everything else. I would it would only cost me about four grand a year to really put the solar on the house. So over you know if I can put four grand aside for three years, I could do the whole house and be at a zero emission. And I'm really thinking about that because currently with my electricity bill. Um, running and of course electricity is very expensive here in Hawaii. I'm running about three hundred and sixty dollars on electricity bill. It really starts making sense down the road. You know, you do the math on that. It doesn't take too long for you know twelve thousand dollars pay back be pr pretty fast. I could by year four, I could almost be zero dollars. I wouldn't have anything into it. So, you know, it makes a lot of sense financially. Just got to be able to do the upfront because you got to pay for it up front and then you got to wait until you get your tax refund and you got to play with your taxes to make sure you get enough back because there's a, the way the incentives work is, you know, it, it uh, you just have to play the numbers with your accountant a little bit. And uh, we're real close to pulling the trigger here. But are you guys, have you guys made the jump? Are you guys jumping on solar at all? Um, nothing better than I would think to make, to be able to not have to be, rely on the grid and uh, or send something back to the grid and and uh and not have electricity bill anymore that's pretty exciting to me and with the cost you know everything here in hawaii is driven by oil pretty much all our electricity so um you know as oil goes up the, the basically the return rate coming back into making solar affordable is is uh, fast like they're so backed up on solar plans even if i said today go um, it'll be December before a solar panel is put on my house. So that far behind on installations here. So it's going like a gangbuster. So what's what's happening in your neighborhood? Love to hear from you. Um, how many of you have a sling box? I don't have one. I don't feel that I would use one to stream something back. You know, we cut the cord here a while back. And uh, so what we watch is basically in set -top, different types of set-top boxes and through connected TV, um, you know, where before we had everything stacked in the DVR, you know, because we cut the cord, um, really don't have a use for a sling box. But uh, the cable TV operators are saying, hey, we, we don't want anything to do with sling box. But um, the re I wonder if the resistance is that 
it would impact uh, you know their subscription rates and so forth. But there's a lot of discussion about it in a Bloomberg article, and um, they're looking at different ways to make available content uh, when you're not at home and so forth. But um, anyway, we'll see what happens with it. If you got a sling box, love to hear your feedback on it, how much you like it. Well, with negotiations going on with the U.S. debt limit, uh, apparently everything is on the table for for cutbacks, and we we're you know we need to have the government scaled back and everything else that goes along with saving money. But it appears that NASA uh, may be in for a bit of a, a rude awakening here. Um, basically, NASA is going to be taking as much as a ten percent budget cut, and on the chopping block is a space-based observatory expected to replace the Hubble called the James Webb Tele Space Telescope. Um, the JWST is meant to provide a window into an, an area of the spectrum that Hall Hubble couldn't view, and uh, it feels that uh, they may be cutting the budget and and basically canceling the. Uh, Web Space Telescope, you know, with all the stuff that they, you know, here's one piece of scientific equipment. Why do they want to cancel that? You know, is it look at the science that could be gained from that. You just think of that the, even though it's an expensive piece of hardware, doesn't make sense that that would be a worthy investment to make you know, of all the things that they spend money on, all these stupid studies and, you know, everything else. You know, one thing, you, at least in my course, you know, I'm a, I like space stuff. And uh, so I don't know. What do you guys think about them cutting that through the, uh, the negotiations they're making? Let's talk about the war that's going on over at uh, Engadget. Well, boy, oh boy, it's not pretty. Um, and there is a serious war going on. You know that uh, Josh uh, Topolsky left Engadget. And uh, he's going to be going to, they're going to be launching a new tech site over at SB Nation. Of course, SB Nation is doing pretty cool stuff on the sports side. But Josh is basically going and picking off all the primary guys over at uh, Engadget. I think he's gotten 16 writers so far to defect. And um, so Engadget originally had about 22 or 23 people. So they've taken all the best people out of there. Um, wow. Wow. <laughs> has anybody seen the uh, quality of Engadget slip at all? Have this Has their quality of content slipped? I, I haven't noticed, but uh, you take 16 of their writers away from them, it, it has to make an impact. Hey, over on uh, Gmail, there's a uh, way to change your uh, your inbox setup now. You can set up a change of style. There's also there's some stuff going on with the templating. You can, change, you can choose a different template. You now can set up uh, the way you want your inbox sorting. There's all kinds of cool stuff that they've rolled out with Gmail. So if you haven't been to the web-based one in a while, definitely check it out and uh, all the new changes. I have the links up to these in the in the show notes, of course. Hey, Google is asking businesses to stay out of Google+. Plus For now, they have a link to make available. They Basically, if you want to get access to um, the business side of it, um, that they're they'll basically announce when it's going to happen. And, and supposedly it could happen within a couple of weeks. Um, so these brand pages, if they, if they come that quick, here's what I am really excited about on the brand pages. And this is completely different than Facebook. Okay. So raw voice has um, a page for blueberry and for tech podcast. And we've got a raw voice page, but really what we're doing with those is, it's just they're there, and we 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 there isn't a lot of interaction with our uh, with our content creators on those sites. But what we what we want to do is when the Google branded pages come up, we'll take uh, all nine thousand of our content creators that we work with, and we'll put them in either specific channels, and it would set it up so that it would be maybe based on the categories that they're in, and then we'll set up sub channels. So in other words, if I've got an ad deal coming. Or if I got a show that I want to help mentor, a set of shows will help. We can drag them into certain circles, and we can have like conversations with smaller groups of of content creators. Because it's really hard to put out one message to all nine thousand shows. You know what I want to say to the sports guys is different than what I want to say to the tech guys and to the education. You know all these different. Uh, they all have their own special needs and different ways to communicate with them. And I think if they, if the content creators interact with us that way, we can really work 
with our content creators in a much, much better way and have much more intimate conversations and, and help them achieve their goals, which ultimately will help our business and get more ideas. And we can have little um, um, uh, groups where we can do studies. And then we can actually bring in, um, maybe we'll have two branded sites, one for our content creators and a second branded site for those listeners and stuff that use our services. And then we could bring them in and actually do discussions that way. Um, I, as soon as Google Plus is ready, we'll be there. Um, I can't wait. Uh, the folks at Google say a couple of weeks. They're doing some testing with uh, Ford and I uh, hear with Mashable. So a few sites are getting access to the early beta on the business rollout. Um, boy, I am really jazzed about what is the potential for the Google brand and uh, being able to you know, set something up where we can uh, work with our content creators real closely within, you know, I don't want to say into in the different circles and be able to, to place everyone there. Be a little bit of work to set it up and not everyone's going to be coming in and, and, and uh, getting in there. But if they want to work in these groups, um, it's going to be awesome. It really is. So we'll see. We'll see how it works out. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. I don't know. Uh, only time will tell. Are you ready for the new version of OS 10 are you ready for uh for, are ready for for the update well Google's going to have an overnight event on July 13th and obviously the night before Lion release on the 14th and they're expecting uh, potentially a MacBook Air update along with uh, uh maybe some MacBook minis and even a Mac Pro update um for those of you uh, I did do a refresh on my MacBook Pro so I've got a new MacBook Pro here a quad core uh, non-reflective screen. I, I upgraded to eight gigs of RAM. And uh, so basically I got one very happy or actually a couple of very happy kids because the other machine basically got handed down to them. So I went basically three years since I've uh, refreshed. And uh, it's a nice machine. It really, really is. And uh, it will travel with me and, and do things that I, I do when I'm on the road. But uh, not an expensive purchase, by the way. But um, a nice machine nonetheless. So, and you know what I was told at the, here's what was really cool. I bought the update to um, Final Cut about, well, two weeks ago. And I've been using it. It's been okay. So when I did the update, I said, you know, I asked the Apple Store rep. I said, okay, first of all, I'm a business. I'm buying this as a business. I said, how do I move this version of uh, Final Cut over onto the other machine? You know, because I'm thinking I don't have I have to have a license for every computer. So, oh, no, no, no. You should just go to the app store and install it. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I said, I said, that's for consumers. I said, you mean I can load it on a second machine and keep it on the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still need to go back and read the licensing terms. I don't think he's correct on that. So what I did was I installed it on the new machine and I deinstalled it off the old one. But apparently what they do is everything in the app store that you buy is tied to your user account. And here's what's totally trippy. And I'll have to give it to Google, I mean, give it to Apple. It was the easiest transition to a machine that I have ever made. I did the standard transition profile. It pulled everything in. And then I went into the App Store and picked the apps that I wanted. And it just like, you know, bye, 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 bye. And sh down they came, installed. The only thing that I had installed by hand was uh, a version of, of Microsoft Office. And boom, it's done. And I hate to say it, as much as I don't like the idea of not having a physical disk, they, they hit, they've, hit a, they've got it figured out in this whole App Store stuff. It's all, you have to be careful. <laughs> you can look at the prices closely because you can get click and credit card happy real quick. But um, I was pretty impressed. Um, so I'm going to load parallels on it and we'll get uh, Windows on the machine as well. So I'll be able to go back and forth. And um, But, you know, it's just the opposite. Brian, our creative guy, uh, basically he's he's like, I could care less about the Mac and he's got one sitting on his desk and he's still a primary PC guy. It's kind of, it's kind of funny. It really is. 
And now here I am more and more using a Mac and seeing stuff that's that they're doing that's cool that I kind of been talking negatively about on the show. And I'm trying it myself. I'm like, oh, that was pretty smart. Um, so kind of eat and crow here a little bit. So for those of you that are Mac users out there, you guys can you guys can jump for joy. I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid totally yet, but I am still, you know, right here. We're, we're in a PC world, and there's only one Mac sitting over here. So don't forget that, all right? The FCC's delivered net neutrality rules to OMB. I had to just, I, I can't give that, can't give the PCs up, okay? <laughs> oh. But the FCC today delivered its net neutrality rules to Office of Management Budget, paving way for approval for the regulations to become official pending. So this is going to happen over the next 30 days. Um, good article over in GigOM talking about when will traditional telephone hang up, and they figure by 2018, less than 6% of the U.S. population will be on a traditional PTSN line. So what do you guys think? What do you think? You think by 2018 that we're going to be uh, – uh, the majority of people will no longer have a normal telephone, a, a, a copper wire telephone. Email me at geeknews at gmail.com or call us call the voicemail hotline at 619-342-7365. Hey, over on Gizmodo, they've got a good article on a surgeon who's performing the world's first synthetic organ transplant. For the first time in history, a patient has been implanted with a synthetic windpipe. This is what my father-in-law needed. And it was created using the patient's stem cells and a, rep a replica of his original windpipe. And it kind of looks like PVC-ish. Let me show you a picture of this thing. This is way cool. I'm telling you, they're growing parts for us, folks. They are growing us organs. And how long? Oh, this is, you know, here is a synthetic organ transplant made from stem cells. At what point, and they use this, uh, a, a, a 3D scanner to basically determine what his throat would look like. And you could put this in this guy. So more artificial, or I'm telling you, you're just going to order a kidney soon. I'm not kidding. It's going to happen. <laughs> and, you know, that is an organ that's in high demand. Make sure you have your donor card filled out, folks. It's being reported a quarter of all car crashes involve a gadget. If your smartphone doesn't kill you with cancer, it might be fated. It might be fated to help crash your car. MSNBC is reporting, according to a study by the Governors of Highway Safety Associations, 25% of all car crashes are connected to portable electronics. So, do you think that rings true? That's what they're saying. This is data that was pulled together from the crash results. All right, we talked about that social media background check. The folk over, folks over at Gizmodo ran their staff through the social media background check, and one of their editors failed. Um, this is, of course, talking about people that are applying for jobs and companies doing background checks. And we know that the, a we talked about a company here called Social Intelligence, where the FTC gave them a green light to run background checks on your internet and social media history. And essentially what they came up with, and if I can scroll this down here on this screen, is they basically come up with a number of um, items and talks about his candidates that pass the review. Then it goes into uh, information about the person. Then it dug up, finding about uh, talking, the individual was talking about uh, drug usage on a specific blog post back in 2008. That goes a little different, talking about uh, some negative issues where he talks again about uh, some drug use in a blog post. And then there is, um, gives you full links to those specific articles. Along with it, you, it highlights the information on the uh, web page. And this is another thing where this guy supposedly shared drugs with somebody but one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't show a picture of you it, it basically uh, blacks out your face and your hands and it tries to make sure that the employer doesn't know your gender or your age but I think on this one it's pretty well not your, your they're going to know what your gender is when they interview you but they're going to you know this kind of blocks out what your age is now heck you know an older guys have a little bit of a belly you know they should block that out too because that's sometimes an indication of age but um I also blocked out information where he talked about uh, 
his uh, alcohol usage and so forth. But this is what companies are going to be getting on us, folks. There's no such things as privacy anymore. And matter of fact, John C. Dvorak wrote a good article talking about the permanence of posting online. And um, talks about in 20 years, uh, really anything you do is, or not 20 years, anything you do today um, is going to, they're going to be able to look back in history and see everything. And uh, facial recognition, they're going to start do, using that. You, be, you basically at a party and you have a cocktail in your hand and facial recognition is going to say, oh, that's Todd. And it's going to put you somewhere and the people are going to be able to search for it. Um, it's, it's really crazy stuff out there. So I have this link up to both John's article and, of course, the one um, over on Gizmodo talking about the social media background and, and privacy of the Internet and how it really doesn't exist anymore. A pretty cool video and, and audio of a the sight and sounds of Saturn Superstorms. I have that link up in the show notes. And also, hey, are you ready to fly your car to work? I'm ready. I'm ready to fly around Honolulu. I, I better not fly to work, but take the kids to school. <laughs> um, Got to find an airport close enough. The flying car is ready. And hey, it's not very expensive. It's going to cost you a quarter of a million dollars. You have to do a down payment of 10000 bucks. And, of course, you got to go through a flight school in order to fly this thing. But, yes, you can land and transition to uh, a standard automobile and drive this thing uh, to work. So it's been approved for utilization here in the United States to order yours now. Um, this is just another toy that only the ultra-rich are going to be able to, uh, to afford. It's being reported that Verizon powers 32% per of all iPhone 4s in the United States. So Verizon's made some good... Uh, reach into the iPhone market. Okay, um, got a whole bunch of stuff here that I'm not going to be able to go into, but uh, of course Skype was uh, integrated into Facebook. If you've tried that, love to hear your feedback on it. So far, I haven't uh, personally played with it my, myself, but uh, from what I've heard so far, it's just pretty much standard uh, Skype's call back and forth like you do now with a one-on-one -on -one type thing. Um, there's been a lot of people trying to get their data out of Facebook. So I've got some links to some articles about that and how to transfer stuff out of, out of Facebook into like Picasa or different websites. I've also got some information that will be in the show notes. that talks about a new YouTube launch, uh, YouTube reskinning, and it goes along with some design changes that Google has been making. If you fly U S airways, uh, don't uh, take a picture of any of the staff. Um, they may call you a security risk and this is a true story. Uh, information's over at uh, TechDirt. Hey, if you in Canada, Rogers has went live with its first LTE network today. So make sure you, uh, if, you if you're looking to uh, get a new mobile device, you can do that. A Citrix go to meeting and Citrix receiver has been preloaded on the Droid 3. So those of you that have Citrix accounts, you'll be able to use that preloaded. And I just got to show you this cool adapter for the iPhone. This thing is awesome. What it is, it's a iPhone 4 adapter where you can mount your SLR from Canon on there. So basically, you uh, can take your $3,000 lens that you have, <laughs> and uh, it ties into your iPhone 4, and you can take pictures with it. So 249 sc uh, scores you one of these aluminum bad boys. You can, uh, so where can you pick this up? You can pick this up at Photo Jojo is the, uh, wait a minute, is that the name of the site? Yeah, no, it's two four. Yeah, two forty nine, and is it by Photo Jojo? Anyway, I have a link up to the source article on this. This was an article that was uh, put out by Engadget that they picked up somewhere else. But uh, yeah, you can pick one of these up. I won't be buying one of those. Uh, Anonymous is vowing revenge after fifteen have been arrested, so they uh, they're not happy. Some of their people are being picked up. I guess if they quit hacking people, they wouldn't have that problem. Getting ready to update to uh, to Lion. There's instructions on how to create a bootable Mac drive. So uh, there's some instructions here that's basically uh, available. And this is from a website that is building some informational stuff on the new version of, of Lion. So I have that up in the show notes for you. The uh, Amazon, or actually the Apple lawsuit against Amazon on the App Store name has uh, been dismissed by a U.S. court. So uh, this is a nice one for Apple to lose. I'm glad to see that uh, so far um, the injunction, they haven't lost it. The injunction has been dismissed. So Amazon continue to call their app store the, the app store for the time being. 
And if you're on Verizon and you've picked up a new data plan, you're going to get SMS alerts when you're almost out of your bandwidth allotment that they've uh, set up for you on these new plans. If you're a Google Doc user, you can now add videos to the Google Docs. So that's pretty cool. That's a new feature there if you are a Google Apps user. And finally, a couple is trying to uh, trademark Bitcoin. Looks like they're trying to get over on the Bitcoin community. So we'll see where this one runs. And uh, this will probably be updated here in the coming weeks. I do have one voicemail. Let me go ahead and get into that first. And then we'll drop into an uh, email real quick and try to get you guys out of here on time. So let's see if I've got this all dialed in right. Let's, uh, let's play this. Hey, Todd. This is Scott from Michigan giving you a call. I just finished watching your Samsung Series 5 Chromebook unboxing uh, video that you have posted on thechromeshow.com. And I've got two recommendations for you. Um, one, on thechromeshow.com, the video that you have up there, it's got to be a higher resolution one. Um, it takes a little longer to load. But there, the problem I have with it is I don't see a full screen button. Um, am I dismissing it, or is there not a full screen button? I'm, I'm viewing that in the Google Chrome browser, browser by the way. And um, other than that, the video is very good. So um, next video, you might want to have a little bit better lighting on it. Um, it looks good, but just a little better lighting could make it more studio quality. So <laughs> all right, uh, I look forward to seeing the first uh, Chrome Show episode. Okay, bye. Hey, um, basically, if you go over to the chromeshow.com, when you load the, uh, you see here that it's got, it's set up to uh, be pretty big in the screen as it is. But if you click on the play a new window button, it basically brings it up. Now, this is going to. Welcome to the Chrome Show at the chromeshow.com. Well, let me turn Part this. Part of the Geek News. So you can see it playing here, and you can make that bigger um, if you want. I guess it doesn't scroll that out. I've got this set up. Um, with HTML5 to be pretty big. So um, I can make that pop-up bigger so that actually the video... But, you know, the, the video is being uploaded 640 by 360. So if you really stretch it beyond that, it, it, it really doesn't... Uh, it, it doesn't... You know, it's going to start pixelating. But uh, we're definitely going to work on those scaling issues on the screen so you can actually see the screen. And uh, one thing about doing a shorter show, I can actually encode at a much higher bit rate and actually have a much better quality video. And that's one of the challenges about this show, being long and being able to have a good enough uh, bit rate for it to show good on the Roku. So that's it's been a challenge, and I'm, I'm still struggling with that. I um, got some email here from uh, from Near. He says, Todd, I searched the Chrome show on Google's Listen and other Android podcasters. It's not listed there as yet. Yeah, we've got to get, we just got the iTunes approval back, so it'll be starting to populate out into the other sites here shortly got an email from tom he says hey todd half of tvs have internet can will have internet connectivity by 2015 so that's pretty cool i'm glad to see that's going to happen just goes to show you tom that uh we're, we're going to continue to move forward with uh, uh with internet connected tv and this is going to be the place to be can I email here from bruce say, hey todd you were asking about unlocking experiences outside of the united states so i bought a uh, iphone 3gs with pay g contract from o2 and jailbroke slash unlock to use a corporate SIM. At that time, our corporate network was using Orange, and the iPhone was not available on the network. Result was I avoided the iOS upgrades in order to keep the service for about 18 months, but eventually a factory set was required when the phone locked up, so um, so hard-coded back to the O2 baseband, etc. In the interim period, O2 and most UK networks now offer a 15-pound uh, unlock facility allow iPhones to be used with alternate carriers, especially when roaming abroad due to some high bills hitting the press. This is supposed to be in some statute somewhere, but not sure if it's law at this time. Ricards Bruce out of the UK. Thanks, Bruce. Got an email here from Eric. Say, hey, Todd, I was thinking that you should be able to zoom on the desktop using the universal access feature of the Chrome OS. So, yep, absolutely. I know both OS 10 and Windows let you zoom in like a magnifying glass as parts of the stream. This should help. Aloha, Eric in Japan. Hey, Eric, we're looking forward for you to be back in the United States. I know you're going to be in the lower 48 and not in uh, Hawaii, but uh, when you get back, uh, let's chat, okay? Can't wait for you to get back in 2012. Um, 
Nir says, hey, Todd, Waz is pronounced Waze. Find them at W-A-Z-E dot com. It will definitely cut your commute and avoid traffic jams both in Hawaii and on your travels near. Near the problem in Hawaii is there's only so many routes into downtown Honolulu, and in the mornings, there's always a traffic jam. Uh, I got an email here from Robert. Say, hey, Todd, follow up from last night's uh, show. Apparently, a way to add someone to Google Plus is to add them to your circle and then share something with them. Supposedly, that's because they'll need to join Google Plus to see what you shared with them. Tried that so far, Robert. No luck can be able to get you an invite. But I got invites, folks wanting invites from Robert. Two Roberts want invites. Um, let's see here. And I think that's it. That's it for email, and voila, we're good. So, everyone, thanks for hanging out with me. Of course, if you got comments on the show, Twitter me at Geek News or call the voicemail hotline at 619-342-7365, 619-342-7365. News at gmail.com is the voicemail hotline. Open 24 hours a day, seven days a week for your pleasure to call in and, and cuss me out or whatever you want to do. But uh, thanks for being part of the Ohana here. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And we'll see you back here on, on Saturday for the Saturday Morning Tech Show. And then we'll be doing the Crumb Show shortly after that. And then, of course, we'll be back here Monday, Monday night, for another edition of the Geek News Central podcast for a Tuesday release. Come over to geeknewscentral.com. Check out our great content. Don't forget the Gadget Professor, Robot Underpants, the Crumb Show, and all the other content from our great bloggers at the website. Everyone take care. We'll see you next time. And aloha.